Hi everyone, welcome to Simplifying the Complex. My name is Christina and today I'm joined by Kathy Stevenson, the Executive Vice President of Yellow Brick Consulting. Kathy has more than 30 years of industry experience, which includes the planning and completion of more than 20 patient moves across the country. Kathy, I know one of the subjects that our clients are so excited to jump into planning is the patient move. Often there's a lot of concern as to how we're gonna safely and efficiently move patients on day one. When is the appropriate time for our clients to really start thinking and planning for both the department and patient move? Well, Christine, I can tell you pretty much across the board when we start working with a new client, everybody wants to start talking about the move. It's exciting, right? It's the culmination of all the work that they've been doing. They want to get into the new building and they really want to talk about that. We know that planning things like workflow, staffing, and such is really important to be doing in those years leading up to that time. And so we know that about nine to 12 months out is when we really want to start focusing on move planning. We make some general assumptions early about the number of patients that need to move, whether there's ambulances involved, and what the staffing the hospital can support for those days are. But really nine to 12 months out is when we start that detailed planning. One of the complexities that we have to consider when building our patient move sequence is the types of patients that will be moving on move day. What types of patients do we typically recommend to move first and why? Well, safety is our number one priority that day. And so we work with our clients to develop a very detailed sequence of that patient move plan to make sure that we have the right resources on both the sending and receiving side. So for example, with an ICU move, we'll move a few low acuity patients first to make sure that they're getting settled and there aren't any issues, then move a high acuity patient or two and then alternate back and forth so that we really do keep that support for the teams on both ascending and receiving. We certainly have completed our fair share of moves across the country, and I know one of the things that surprises our clients is when we share that we're gonna be moving all the patients in one day. Um, what is the logic behind that philosophy? So move day is stressful for everyone, and it takes a lot of resources, and not just for patient support. There really needs to be that operational support on both the existing and the new space. And so by using that one day all hands approach to the move, it really helps limit the amount of resources that are needed and that stress to the organization to make sure that we have everything we need to safely move the patients. Beyond the stress that comes with move day, there are a lot of key constraints that need to be considered when we build our patient move plan. What would you consider the top constraints that need to be accounted for? I think uh, one of them is certainly the facility and some of the constraints, and that's typically in the existing space where we maybe only have one elevator that all the patients can fit with all of their things in the transport team, or maybe limited paths of travel. One of the other things is the amount of equipment that needs to be moved with the patient, um, or how much transport equipment we might need. And if there's limits to that, then that may limit how quickly we can move patients, or we may need to rent some additional equipment for those types of moves. And then lastly, the actual staff resources. How many teams do we have available? What type of staffing can they support to really make that patient move safe on, from both the sending and receiving side? I know one of the lessons learned that we share with our clients is that you can never have enough food on move day. Uh, beyond the food aspect, what are some things about planning that might not be on the forefront of our clients' minds that need to be considered to have a successful day? Well, I think um, one of the things that I always suggest is if that you haven't been involved in a large move, that you really do work with a team um, who has been involved in large moves to understand what are all those things to consider. All those detailed things of part of that plan that we work with clients to understand um, is some of the things we mentioned, the food, the amount of equipment, those paths of travel. I think the other thing that's very important and can't be understated is a well-planned communication plan, not only for the staff and the providers, but also patients and families. You can imagine how stressful it would be for patients and their families to hear, oh, during your hospitalization, we're gonna move to a new building. So really providing what's gonna happen that day, how, thing, how safety is being considered, and to really make them feel comfortable. And I think, again, just going back to that communication plan and making sure that everybody understands that role and that nobody's going rogue on that day. Well, Kathy, I certainly learned a lot from you today, and I hope our viewers did too. As always, please feel free to reach out to us at info at and until next time, thank you.